Hey everyone, hello and welcome back to my channel, Your Physics Meet. Well, uh, most of us have a little bit fear about VIVA examination or when it comes to the VIVA, we get a little bit nervous. So that's why I have come with this video where I have discussed few questions which are often asked in the VIVA examination during the practical. And um, as the practical is knocking at the door, uh, so I thought, why not? Anyways, uh, if you have any kind of queries after this, you can ask that in the comment section below. And of course, in one video, I cannot cover each and every practical. So in this video explicitly, I have done about the Viva questions I have discussed, which is on the measurement of Young's modulus by the method of flexion. And that practical, I already have been done a separate video on that. So before watching this, if you can watch that video, I will put the link in the description box as well as in the i button. So please go and watch that before watching this video. And I have discussed about the questions which are often asked in this video. And uh, I think you will be benefited by today's video. Well, so without a further delay, let's get started. Hey everyone, hello and welcome to my channel, your physics mate. Well, from the introduction, you got to know that today's video is about some Viva questions which are often asked in the practical examination. And uh, in this video, I will discuss about that experiment which is called to determine Young's modulus of elasticity of the material of a bar by the method of flexion. And uh, in this experiment, uh, how to perform this experiment, I already have uh, discussed that in a previous video which is available in my channel. And I will of course put the link in the description box and in the i button. So uh, please go watch that video before watching this. Because if you don't know how to uh, do that practical, that would be a little bit problematic for you to answer this kind of problems or uh, to understand this questions if you don't know about the practical so please go and watch that video how to do that practical before watching this viva questions okay so the first question is what do you mean by stress and strain well the answer is a force or a system of forces acting upon a body produces a relative displacement of its various parts and causes a change in length, volume or shape of the body. The change in length, volume or shape of the body relative to the original quantity is called a strain. The restoring force generated per unit area of the body is called stress. So what is the definition of stress and strain that is elaborately written here? So if you are asked this questions, you have to answer this way. And uh, you can also be asked a question like what is, uh, can you um, say me the variable or the quantity which is uh, of the same dimension of stress. So that is called pressure. So the quantity or the variable pressure has the same dimension as that of stress. Okay. So that uh, kind of questions are also being asked. The second question is state Hooke's law. So you have to answer this way that Hooke's law states that within elastic limit, the stress generated within a body is proportional to the strain. That is according to Hooke's law, within elastic limit, stress is proportional to the strain. Okay. Question number three, define Young's modulus. That is, or what is Young's modulus? The answer is, this is defined as the ratio of the longitudinal stress to the longitudinal strain. Okay. Okay. Question number four. What do you mean by neutral layer of a bent beam? Well, the answer is when a beam is bent, its top surface becomes concave. That is, if I draw the picture here, Suppose I have a beam here, the beam was this one, okay. So when 
when the weight is given here when the weight is given here at the midpoint the beam is bent a little if the beam is bent the new portion will become this way it is bent a little and this part is in this way so a beam is bent right the upper portion is bent a little here the lower portion is also bent a little this way so when a beam is bent its top surface becomes concave that is this surface the upper surface that is that is the this surface this one this becomes concave you can see it from here this is concave okay and the bottom surface becomes convex that is this one the bottom one this portion this becomes concave right can you see it from here this one is convex sorry concave and this the lower one or the bottom one becomes concave sorry convex the upper one becomes concave and the lower one becomes convex between these two surfaces of the bent beam there is a layer whose length remains unaltered that is between these two surfaces there is a layer in between them suppose here somewhere here and that layer does not bent okay that layer does not bend and this layer is called the neutral layer again i am repeating this when a beam is bent its top surface becomes concave and the bottom surface becomes convex and between the concave and convex surfaces there is a layer in between which does not bend and that layer is called the neutral layer okay question number 5 how do you ensure that in your experiment the elastic limit is not exceeded the answer is the consistency in the readings of depressions for both increasing load and decreasing load indicates that in the experiment the elastic limit is not exceeded that is our readings for the increasing and decreasing load are consistent which defines that the elastic limit is not exceeded in our experiment okay question number 6 which dimensions breadth depth or length of the bar should be measured very carefully and why well the answer is the depth of the bar should be measured very carefully since its magnitude is small and it occurs in the expression of y that is young's modulus in the power of 3 and inaccuracy in the measurement of depth will produce the greatest proportional error in y that is young's modulus so to understand the question let us again see what is the expression of young's modulus this one right in the expression of young's modulus you can see the length breadth and depth depth is very small amongst this three De the depth is very small the length is very high breadth is small and the depth is the smallest among this three so this is one of the causes why it is very important and another cause is the d or the depth has a power of 3 here right so if the depth is small and it has a power of 3 that means it has the most importance in measuring the amount of young's modulus because if you have a error some error then the error will be in the power of 3 that is the inaccuracy increases as the depth has a power of 3 so it has a very importance or it rose uh, it plays a role which is very important to measure the value of young's modulus so we need to measure this very carefully as it is very small and it has in the expression of y 
it has a power of 3 okay okay now comes to the now come to the next question question number 7 does the weight of the bar have any effect so the answer is no since the depression due to the load is calculated by subtracting the zero load reading the weight of the bar does not affect the result well to understand this you need to uh, you need to just watch the video which i already have done on this practical okay so in the practical when measuring the depressions you need to deduct the depression uh, from for the zero resistance or the zero load reading should be deducted from to measure depression okay so in every case when we are go, going to increase the load we need to subtract the zero load reading from every reading okay and if you don't know why it is doing you can watch that video i will give the link here okay so that's why it doesn't affect the bar the bar or the weight of the bar does not affect the experiment okay question number eight what is the si unit of young's modulus the answer is pascal okay question number nine will the value of young's modulus obtained by you change if the length depth or breadth of the bar is altered the answer is no because this is a fundamental property of the material so the young's modulus does not depend on length depth or breadth that is why it is a fundamental property of the material okay and then uh, last question of today's video is what is the cgs unit of young's modulus or why the answer is nine per semi square uh, so well these are the questions which are often asked if this practical is given to you so uh, all the best for your examination which is